Mutual Broadcasting System presents... Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Cowhide. Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. Take the easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is. Cowhide. The very intriguing story of a suitcase that was packed with murder. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was early afternoon, and the customer's room in the brokerage offices on the second floor of a midtown office building was crowded, as usual. Harold Phillips, a middle-aged clerk, crossed the large room, nervously adjusting his tie, and stopped outside the office of Mark Baldwin, the manager. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, Phillips. Come in. Come in, please. Thank you, sir. You sent for me, Mr. Baldwin. Come here, Phillips. I hope nothing is wrong, sir. My books... Sit down. I've always been very careful, sir. I never let a page go without checking and rechecking. Phillips, you've been with this company for 30 years. Yes, sir. Have you ever thought of leaving us? Leaving? Why, no, sir. Not once in 30 years? Well, I... (laughs) Please don't hold it against me, sir. There were times when I thought I might do better somewhere else, but... Yes, yes. I realized that I couldn't, and I stopped thinking about it. It's been 15 years since I... Good for you, Phillips. I guess we can trust you. Uh, What? Open that suitcase on my desk. Uh, Yes, sir. Good heavens! Securities! A half a million dollars worth. And they're all negotiable. But I... Well, look here, Mr. Baldwin. If you're accusing me... Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? If you're accusing me of having packed that suitcase... Phillips. You don't know me, sir. You've been the manager of this office less than a year. But I have a record of excellent service. You can ask the gentleman in the main office if you want to. Phillips, don't be an idiot. I'm not accusing you. But the suitcase... It's going to our Los Angeles office. Oh. You're going to take it there. I? Naturally. You're the only one I can trust with it. But such transfers are usually made by... I know all about it. Now, you'll leave tonight on the 9 o'clock train... I've reserved a drawing room for you. Yes, sir. You'll be careful, of course. You won't leave that drawing room for one minute. But, Mr. Baldwin... I said not for one minute, Phillips. And as for your meals... I'll make arrangements. That's the idea. Uh, One more thing, Phillips. Yes, sir. You are not to discuss this matter with anyone. Not with anyone, including the members of your own family. But Los Angeles, Mr. Baldwin, how can I explain that to Doris, my daughter? Don't. But I'm going away for a long time, for two weeks, perhaps. Think up a good excuse. Only you, I, and the manager of the Los Angeles office know about this transfer. We want nothing to happen to that suitcase or to you. Yes, sir. In other words, Mr. Phillips, we don't want you killed. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your consideration. Yes. Yes, I'll I'll go home and pack uh, after closing time, of course. And will I take the suitcase home with me? No, you stop back here on your way to the train and I'll give it to you. Would uh, 8 o'clock be all right? Fine. But be prompt. The train leaves at 9. Well, I won't be late. And uh, now, Mr. Baldwin, if I may say so... Yes? Thank you for your confidence in me. Doris, my room. Oh, did you eat? Yeah, scrambled eggs. You would. Every time I come home late from work, you... you... Say, what's going on here? I'm just packing. Walking out on me? Only for a little while, dear. What? Yes, Mr. Baldwin has uh, given me a two-weeks vacation. Oh? Uh, with pay, of course. 
<laughs> now, don't stare at me like a frightened little girl. Dad, where are you going? Uh, Aunt Martha's. Uh, that sister of mine has been after me to pay her a visit. But you a... had two weeks vacation not three months ago. Well, Mr. Baldwin wants me to have another one. Why? As a bonus for my good work. Thirty years on one job. Why not cash? He's only the manager of a branch office, dear. Now, stop worrying. you get wrinkles. Dad, he's not sending you away because of something that happened this afternoon. What do you mean, Doris? Well, you... You didn't get sick. Oh, no. Those headaches you used to complain about. Oh, I haven't had one since... Well, I know you've been seeing the doctor. Oh? I didn't say anything because you didn't. I, I thought if you didn't want me to know... <laughs> There's no keeping a secret from you, is there? <laughs> well, everything's all right. My blood pressure's down. Yes, but this afternoon... Oh, a mild attack, nothing serious. But Mr. Baldwin happened to notice it, and, well, he's very fond of me, and the kind who appreciates loyalty. Oh, Dad, why won't you give up your job? Give it up? Well, what would I do? Must you do anything? I'm making enough for both of us. Oh, nonsense, dear. You're going to be married someday. Oh, sure. Don't you think so? First, I've got to find a man. What's wrong with the men you know now? Oh, why talk about them? Listen, Dad, you've been working long enough. And I'm going to keep right on working. Uh, Goodbye, dear. I'll see you in two weeks. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to station with you. Haven't you a date for tonight? I'll call it off. You'll do nothing of the kind. Dad. Why, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to lose my temper. It's all right. I, well, you see, treating me like an invalid. I just wanted to see you off, Dad. It isn't necessary. You've got a date. Keep it. Oh, goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Take good care of yourself. Hello. I'd like to see Mr. Kenneth Badger. I'm Ken Badger. Are you the private detective? Well, so they say. But, oh, all right, take a look at this newspaper. For free? Read it. Now, look, Miss, Read I... Read the have... headline, please. You've got a way about you. Okay. Brokerage clerk disappears with half a million. Harold Phillips for 30 years a clerk in the brokerage offices of... How am I doing, kid? Do I pass the literacy test? M my name's Doris. Mm, my favorite name. Harold Phillips is my father. Mm-hmm. Well, it... What'd you say? Mr. Badger, I'm desperate. A good-looking girl like you. My father didn't steal those securities. What a shame. I know he didn't. And you're going to find him and prove that he didn't. I am? Yes. Uh, will you? Now, listen, honey. There comes a time in every man's life when he's got to say no. This is my time. But you don't know my father. Is that bad? He's not a thief. He's the most honest, the, the most conscientious. <laughs> oh, somebody told you about my weakness, huh? Well, you'd only try to understand dad's been with that company for 30 years, mm -hmm. handling money and securities every day. If he wanted to steal, he could have done it in dribs and drabs, fixing the books. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to wait until yesterday to take a half a million at one time. Maybe he didn't get the idea until yesterday. Oh, please, mister. Oh, cut it out, will you? <laughs> will you please cut it out? I'm not going to be carried away by a flood. All right. All right, Mr. Magic. You don't have to take this case, but I'll tell you what I really think. Over a cup of coffee? When I came home from work last night, Dad was packing. There's a nice little restaurant down the street. Come on. Listen to me. Dad said that Mr. Baldwin, the manager of his office, had given him a two weeks vacation. He was going to spend it with Aunt Martha at her place in the country. I, I phoned Aunt Martha this morning. Dad wasn't there. No. Mr. Badger, my father wouldn't lie to me. Something happened to him last night. What do you think? He might have been kidnapped or murdered. What? Mr. Baldwin's got those securities. That's why he told Daddy could go away. And then last night his dad was going to the station. Wait a minute. Why did you phone Aunt Martha this morning? Dad hasn't been feeling well. I, I was worried. Mm hmm. I'm going to give you a break, baby. Oh? Only because I like you. But there's one condition. What? From now on, it's Ken. Uh, yes, Ken. Okay, Doris. I'm going down to the brokerage office to see what Mr. Baldwin looks like. Oh, I'm going with you. You are? I am. That's what I said. You are. Hello, 
Now, you stay here, Doris. Oh, but Ken, here, I... Here, baby. I want Baldwin all to myself. Well. I've got a special interest in international pigs, so so long, honey. I'll see you later. Come in. One badger. What are you doing here? Inspector Hopkins. My old friend. I asked you a question, Ken. I've been retained. By whom? Doris Phillips, the daughter of... Well, Inspector, don't I get a knockdown? If it'll make you happy. <laughs> I'm talking about those two nice people over there. Walter Conrad, the assistant manager, and that's Joyce Lipton, Mark Baldwin's private secretary. How do you do? How do you do? do? Joyce Lipton. Say, haven't we, uh... Have we? Oh, I'm pretty sure of it, but, uh, where? Now, see here, Ken, I'm conducting an investigation. Oh, you're a hard man, Inspector. All the pretty women... State your business and get out of here. Well, since you put it so politely, I'm looking for Mark Baldwin. That's good, so am I. What? Anything else, Ken? Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Are you saying that Baldwin and Phillips... That seems to be his pet theory, Mr. Badger. Shut up, Conrad. All you have to do is answer questions. And all you have to do, Inspector, is to ask them. Intelligent ones. You're looking for trouble, aren't you? Just because Mr. Baldwin didn't come to the office today doesn't mean that he and Phillips took those securities. He didn't show up at his hotel all night, either. That can mean anything, Inspector. Well, some how do you do, huh? Mr. Conrad. Are you butting in, Ken? Just for a couple of questions, Inspector. Mr. Conrad, when was the last time you saw Mark Baldwin? When I left the office yesterday, about six o'clock. And you, Joyce? Seven o'clock. Mr. Baldwin wanted me to stay for some last-minute dictation. Hmm. Dictation, Mr. Badger. Oh, yes. Uh, anybody see him after that? We've been all through that, Ken. My client wants to know, Inspector. Well, I don't know who saw him afterwards. I left at 7 o'clock. I don't suppose you realize how ridiculous this is, do you? Now, see here, Conrad. All I... these questions about Mr. Baldwin. If he had a part in this robbery, do you think he'd be fool enough to disappear? It's been done before, mister. Mark Baldwin wouldn't take half a million dollars to share with a clerk. Is uh, that your opinion, too, Miss Lipton? I have no opinion. I just can't believe that either Mr. Baldwin or Mr. Phillips could have, could have done such a thing. Yes. Now, Mr. Conrad, let me tell you something about who takes and who shares. Hey, Inspector. Ken, if you don't stop butting Take in... Take a look over here. I uh, think you'll be my friend again. Huh? What did you find? I always travel with my nose close to the carpet. My dog taught me that trick. Listen, Ken. Down here. Huh? Tell me what they look like to you. Hmm... Blood stains that somebody tried to wash out. That's funny. That's what they look like to me. They form a line from the desk to the coat closet. What do we do now, Inspector? I'll let you know. <coughs> yeah. This is one thing I didn't expect. Would you say he's dead? I don't say anything when the coroner gets here, Ken. Mr. Conrad, who's that man? Baldwin or Phillips? That. That's Mr. Baldwin. No, no, Doris, you can't come in. I've got to know what's going on, Ken. I told you, I'll tell you later. Why did all those men come here, those policemen and, and the men with the cameras? They're holding a convention. Somebody's been murdered. Oh, my Lord. Dad? No, Mr. Baldwin. All right, I'm still working for you. Can you know what they're going to think? Just keep looking at those quotations. I'll be out as soon as I can. Stabbed in the back, huh? Died between 8 and 9 o'clock last night. What's that, Inspector? You still here? Between 8 and 9 o'clock last night, huh? That's about when Baldwin was murdered, according to the coroner. Holy smoke, then the old guy's innocent. Sure. I'm not kidding. Phillips didn't do it. His daughter told me he took an 8 o'clock train last night. Yeah? Where was he going? To the country to see his sister, Aunt Martha. So it's Aunt Martha. Huh? Oh, all right. So I'm gone for the girl, but... Did, did he get there? Did he... Oh. All right, you win, Inspector. You've got logic. Yeah, stick around, sonny boy. I'm giving free lessons today. Now, Mr. Conrad, you get first crack at the truth. I've told you everything I know, Inspector. I haven't asked you everything. What was kept in that safe? Oh, bond securities, cash. Who knew the combination? Mr. Baldwin, myself. You too, Miss Lipton? I never went to that safe unless it was open. Did you know the combination? Of course not. Look here, Inspector. What are you driving at? Somebody gave Harold Phillips those securities. Somebody did nothing of the kind. 
Phillips knew the combination of that safe. A clerk? He was our oldest employee. We, we felt that we could trust him. Whoever dreamed that he would... I'll take that, Miss Lipton. But it might be company business, Inspector. Yeah, it might. Hello? Yeah, Hopkins talking. Hmm, you don't say. Good. Perfect. Tell Detective Riley to hop on a plane right away. Yeah, I know he's with homicide. We want Phillips for murder. Well, they picked him up in Chicago on a train with two suitcases. What's the matter, kid? No comments from the lovelorn? What about the securities? That's the next episode. Tomorrow morning at police headquarters. What do you mean? The suitcase wasn't loaded with clothing and personal effects, and it wasn't loaded with securities either. Huh? It was loaded, Ken, with newspapers. <laughs> All right, Phillips, let's forget everything you've told me so far. But I've told you the truth, Inspector Hopkins. Yeah. Well, now tell me a few lies. I don't know what to say to you. I didn't kill Mr. Baldwin. I didn't steal any security. You didn't load that suitcase with newspapers either. No. Baldwin did that, huh? And then he stabbed himself in the back. He was alive when I left him at 8.20 the other night. He uh, wasn't in the closet? I told you he was alive, sitting at his desk. Where are the securities, Phillips? I thought they were in the suitcase. Uh... Now listen to me, Inspector. Mr. Baldwin told me to deliver the securities to our Los Angeles office. He didn't want anyone to know. Where are they, mister? He wouldn't even let me tell Doris where I was going. I had to lie to her about a two-week vacation that I was going to spend with my sister, Martha. Phillips, I... have got to believe me, Inspector. I saw the securities in the afternoon. They were in that suitcase. But Mr. Baldwin wouldn't let me take it home. Yeah. I met him that evening at the office, his office, and he handed me the suitcase, locked, and, and train ticket. One way? Yes, he said the manager of the Los Angeles office would give me a return ticket. <laughs> you, you've got to believe me, Inspector. Come on, Phillips. Let's start from the beginning. Now, you knew Baldwin was working late, so you went to the office and killed him. No. You opened the safe and took the securities. Then you took a train for Chicago with a load of newspapers. No, I didn't. Just in case you got picked up. You figured we might take you for a poor sucker who was being framed. That's exactly what I am, but you won't... Hold be... everything, Phillips. Yeah? Uh-huh. What'd he say? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, Dempsey. Phillips, we've just had Los Angeles on the phone. Oh, well, then the manager out there has told you that... He didn't tell me. He spoke to my assistant. Well, what's the difference? You know I'm innocent. He was expecting no security. No, mister. Well, but there must be some mistake. Mr. Baldwin told me... Sit down, Phillips. Have a cigarette. And then talk. Ken? Coffee with tears, huh? It's a bad combination. Did you get Inspector Hopkins? Yes, Doris. When can I see my father? Will you promise not to turn on the faucets? Ken? You can see him anytime. He's just been booked. Oh. Murder in the first degree, without a confession. He didn't do it, Ken. The inspector also told me a lot of other things. He didn't do it, things Ken. Things your father told him. Doris. Yes? Your father knew he wasn't going to have Marvels. What? He was going to California on orders from Baldwin. But he, he told me he... What time is it? A quarter past four. But Ken... Come on, let's get out of here. Are we going down to the prison? Nope. We're going to find out more about a certain security transfer. And about a certain gal with red hair and blue eyes... In a way that's very tantalizing. No, Mr. Badger, I've never been there. Well, then, how, how about or the... Or there either. Okay, Joyce. Can't blame a guy for trying, can you? I can. <laughs> North wind blew me right out of my... Say, have you heard the latest about Phillips? No. He's going to be indicted for murder. Oh, for pity's sake, then he is guilty after all. Only indicted, baby. He's still got an alibi. Really? He claims Baldwin sent him to Los Angeles for those security. Los Angeles? You mean our office out there? Mm-hmm. A sort of transfer. Who told you about it? My bosom pal and crony, Inspector Hopkins. Oh. If a, if a transfer had been arranged, would there be a record of it? Why, of course. In the form of correspondence? 
Possibly. Well, now we're talking the same language. Where's the correspondence? It's in those files. I mean the letters he dictated when he asked you to stay late. Oh, they're in my stenographic notebook. Still there, huh? I, d- I didn't type them up. Uh-oh. That's not being a good secretary, Joyce. Why don't you mind your own business? Okay, I'll just take the book and let Inspector Hopkins mind his business. Well, I was going to type them up, but Mr. Baldwin told me to go home. And then the next morning... Well, I don't have to tell you about the next morning, do I? Aren't you glad? There's nothing in that book about transfer of securities. Nothing? What do you mean? Well, it might be in code. You know, $10,000 a word spelled backwards. Well, I don't think so, because... I know. I'll, uh, I'll take the book down to police headquarters. Why? Well, they've got some of the best typists and code busters in the world. Well, Miss Lipton. Hello, yes. Conrad. Uh, what are you doing in this office? Just talking to a lady. You talk to no one but me, understand? <laughs> so you've been promoted, huh? I'm in charge here now, and I don't want snoopers around. The, the reason? This is a private office. If you have any business, the customer's room is open every day from ten to three. Now, get out. Conrad, did you ever get a massage? You... You wouldn't dare. Oh, I would. But why waste it on you? You hoodlum. Miss Lipton, the next time such characters come in here, I'll... Well, Ken, what did you find out? That's what I'm going to find out, Doris. The counts. What do you mean? You go back to your apartment and wait for my call. Uh, And you? Police headquarters. And wish us luck. Hello. For Pete's sake, Doris, where have you been? Don't be angry, dear. I told you to go back to your apartment and wait for my call. I did, but you didn't call for three hours, and then I had an idea. Where are you now? In a drugstore. Oh, that's nice. Tell them to set up one for me, too. A double model with a... you don't understand. This drugstore is in the building my father works in. The brokerage offices are on the second floor. What got you there? A terrific idea. Now I need help. What's the matter? How soon can you get here? Fifteen minutes. What's the matter, Doris? I'll tell you when I see you. But hurry. All right, kid, you just leave him to me. I'll take care of him. But don't be rough with him, Ken. He's not young. Uh-huh. So you went out and got a detective, huh? What's this about you refusing to answer questions, mister? I got a right to, ain't I, when they come from her? She's only a civilian, like me. What's your name? Joseph. Now, look, officer. Do you know Harold Phillips? Sure I do. Seen him lots of times when he's working late in the brokerage office. Did you see him the night of the murder? I ain't talking to you, lady. <laughs> All right, then you'll talk to me. Sure I've seen him. I took him up in the elevator. What time? Now, listen, you. All right, all right. Tell him. It was 8.15, and I rung him down again at exactly 8.30. You talk like radio time, pal. I got it on my mind. Another detective asked me them same questions about an hour ago. Showed him the book. What book? That's what I wanted to see, Ken. The book everybody must sign when they come in and go out of an office building after 6 o'clock. Did you... Did you think of that all by yourself? (gasps) All of a sudden. Where's the book, Joseph? Right here. And that's where Mr. Phillips signed it. Darling. Hey, are you talking to me? Not tonight, Joseph. You go right up and down your elevator. Come on, Doris. That does it, Ken. That proves Dad's innocent. And you thought of that all by yourself? Dad wouldn't have signed that book if he were going to steal or commit murder. He wouldn't have used the elevator. And I went to school and paid for a license. What are you talking about? Just thinking out loud about how good I am. Will you do me one favor? Oh, you know I will. Then go home. What? And stay there. And don't move until you hear from me. Hiya, Cookie. You mind mind if I come in? Oh, you have the nicest way of asking. I didn't mean to push you. An old habit I picked up in the subway. What do you want? Well, well. It's a nice place. You, uh, you live here alone? Now, listen, Mr. Badger. Joyce, when will you learn to call me, Ken? I'll be at the office at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, if you have anything... I have. Your stenographic notebook. Oh. Did the police get anything out of it? Mm-hmm. A murderer. Really? You're pretty cute, baby. Huh. What did Phillips have to do with my notebook? Fingerprints? Or my notebook? You're not working on all cylinders, Cookie. They were your fingerprints. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Mr. Badger. You don't have to. I'll follow you. <laughs> Why? Oh, I knew I met you somewhere before. But I don't recognize the gun. I let you pull a fast one on me, didn't I? <laughs> I have a lot of fun, Ken. 
Because you're going to be a dead duck in about two minutes. Annie Joyce, the confidence gal. How long did they keep you in stir? A year and two months. Yep. You've come a long way in the last eight years, baby. From swindling to murder. Well, now wait a minute. You don't have to be so impatient. This gun doesn't shoot with the safety catch on. It's all right with me if it doesn't shoot at all. Tell me, uh, how did you get Baldwin to turn his back for the knife? I didn't. He was kissing me when I killed him. Oh, you're just the woman for me. Phillips had gone up with a loaded suitcase, and Mark and I were going to wait until he'd been arrested and sent to jail, and then... You were going to split a half a million. That's right. But you decided why wait and why split. I'm selfish that way. Yeah. But you're going to wait, Cookie, for a quick burn. Well, you won't be around to see it. I'm not so sure of that, Nick. Oh, Stop that oh. gun. She doesn't have to inspect her. It just changed hands. Well... <laughs> Did I do all right, Inspector? For once in your life, when you came in here, I was afraid you was going to close that door with a snap lock on it. Inspector, you don't think much of me, do you? You want the truth. No, just skip it. Imagine hiding those securities under a rug. Yeah, and such a nice rug, too. A half a million dollars worth in her apartment. And me stepping on it all the time. Um, Ken. Yes, dear? How well did you know her? Doris, I told you. I I saw her in a courtroom eight years ago. And you remembered her for so long? <laughs> I've got a weakness for redheads. No, I'm not a redhead. Oh, that can be remedied. Mm. Would it make you happy? Mm. All over. Oh. Hey, <laughs> take it easy. Your father's asleep on that chair. I suppose he wakes up and, and... And? Well, I suppose he does. Dad won't mind. Will you? Well... Well, will you? Oh, my dad. I can't wait all night, Doris. I've got to go to bed. And so closes tonight's story, Cowhide. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Bill Quinn played Ken Badger. Joan Tompkins was Doris Phillips. Cameron Prudhomme was Harold Phillips. Eleanor Phelps played Joyce Lipton, Joe Latham was Inspector Hopkins, and Murray Forbes was Walter Conran. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very intriguing story of a decision that almost cost a man's life. It's called Sentence of Death. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new Crime Club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. Oh, yes. And another thing. Traffic accidents have been increasing at an alarming rate. Avoid them by respecting the rights of your neighbor on the road. And by being sure that you and the car you are driving are in good condition. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for another mutual favorite. Quiet, please, follows in just a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>